Hi, thanks for joining today. Today I'd like to talk to you about what we can do together to ensure young children in conflict settings survive, thrive, and reach their full developmental potential. Let me start with a story about Mona. Mona, a young mother of three children, has brought her severely malnourished daughter, Noor, to a clinic. During the treatment, she shares with the healthcare provider that she's pregnant. The healthcare provider asks her, how is she feeling about the pregnancy? Mona responds, we are struggling, yet somehow we are still making it. But what about our children? How am I going to raise this baby in this situation during this conflict? Parents in every conflict setting share the same worries. All mothers and fathers want to raise healthy, happy, smart, and capable children. But how can they, in the face of these daily challenges and daunting odds, of living in a war zone or other emergency situation? That's where you, the practitioners, come in. You maintain many life-saving services, such as safe childbirth, immunization, and nutritional rehabilitation. And because of you, children and their caregivers manage to survive amidst these difficult circumstances. But it is not enough just to keep children alive. Children need love and affection to grow and develop. They need to feel secure and have at least one stable caregiver who is responsive to their needs and protects them. And they need opportunities to learn, play, make friends, and explore. This may all sound obvious, but studies show that without the right kinds of experiences at an early age, a child will be affected for the rest of their life. Worldwide, poverty and stunting is the reason why at least 43% of children under 5 are at risk of not reaching their full developmental potential. Exposure to violence, displacement, and conflict only exacerbates these risks and increases the proportion of children who face serious adversities. How can this be? Well, the simple answer is that we must do more to ensure all children get the best start in life. Early Childhood Development, or ECD, generally refers to the period from pregnancy to when children reach the age of eight years. But the time from pregnancy to age three, or the first 1,000 days, is especially critical because this is when the brain is developing at its fastest and when the foundations are laid for bonding and attachment. Have you ever heard the expression that children are like sponges? Here is the reason. At birth, a baby has around 100 billion brain cells, as many stars as there are in the universe. The wiring of these cells occurs in a series of waves, starting in late pregnancy. Based on experiences, the wiring is accelerated in the first months and year of life, building the infant's ability to sense, learn, remember, and develop feelings and behaviors. If the brain fails to receive appropriate experiences, for example, as a result of poor caregiver-child interactions, then the formation of these connections will be impaired and brain structure and function will be damaged. In the first 1,000 days, 80% of the brain is built. This brain, the one they build by their third birthday, will impact their ability to learn, to make friends, to keep a job, to stay out of trouble. The list goes on and on. Simply put, if we want children to be able to thrive in all aspects of their life, they not only need good health and nutrition, they also need to feel safe and secure, have opportunities to play, and be cared for responsibly. This is what we call nurturing care. Nurturing care is made up of these five indivisible and interrelated components that children's bodies and minds need to survive and thrive. And of course, caregivers such as parents are best placed to provide their children nurturing care. But parents need help too, especially in the challenges of humanitarian settings. So what more can we do? Let me share some examples from this brief called Nurturing Care in Humanitarian Settings. First, we can start by using all those moments when caregivers and children interact with our health and nutrition services to help a caregiver learn how to care for their child. We must allow the mother and baby to be in skin-to-skin -skin contact immediately after birth and support kangaroo mother care for small babies. We must also encourage a mother to make eye contact with her baby while breastfeeding. This helps strengthen the emotional bond between them and also makes the milk flow better. And of course, fathers must not be forgotten. 
For example, we can help them notice the cues that their child is hungry or full. There are simple activities we can encourage parents to do with their children, like the ones shown here. All of these activities can be done during everyday routines. These play and communicate activities help caregivers and children develop a positive relationship with each other and support children's development. Second, we can care for the caregivers. Any of you who are parents know that sometimes it can just get to be too much. And in a humanitarian setting, there are endless stressors that eat away at parents and impact their mental health and ability to provide nurturing care for their children. We can ask a simple but important question, how are you feeling today? Or provide opportunities for caregivers to talk openly with other parents. This can help them find the energy again to tackle their problems and be happier around their children. And in the process, more likely to notice if their child is feeling ill, is hungry, or in need of a hug. Third, we can think about how to reshape our humanitarian investments to make sure every child gets the best start in life. A 2018 analysis of humanitarian response plans showed that only 58% of the plans mentioned nutrition interventions, fewer than 25% mentioned safety and security interventions, and even fewer plans mentioned interventions to support responsive caregiving or early learning for young children. This is despite the strong evidence and experience that we can integrate nurturing care interventions in our humanitarian services. We can make a difference by acting now. Let's seize the opportunity and strengthen our efforts to make sure that mothers, fathers, and other caregivers of young children are supported to provide nurturing care. And let's make sure no child is left behind. If you would like to learn more about what you can do, please read the brief and explore the Nurturing Care website. Thank you.